Welcome to the December 2016 Public Safety News Briefing. My name is Robert Owens, Assistant Fire Chief with the Fire Department. The order for today will be the Fire Department will present first. The Winston-Salem Police Department Chief Barry Roundtree will present next. And Mel Sadler with the Office of Emergency Management will present last. So obviously with the holidays coming up, we felt the need to have to uh, remind people in the community about some of the holiday safety issues that the fire department normally has to take care of and address. So at this time, I'd like to bring up our senior community educator, Ms. Sabrina Stowe, to talk about holiday fire safety. Good morning. Just want to talk about a few um, reminders and maybe some things that um, some of the members of our public may not have thought about regarding um, holiday and winter fire safety. First thing we want to talk about is um, those of us that do the natural Christmas trees, we just want to put out a few reminders about when you're selecting the tree and also when you're setting up the tree. Make sure that when you choose the Christmas trees that you're checking the the tree for the needles being fresh and that they don't fall off when when they're touched. Also when you're setting those up in your home make sure that they're at least three feet away from any type of heat source keeping it away from anything that's combustible or that may cause a fire including your fireplaces, radiators, candles, your heat vents and also your, your the lights in your home. Um, also want to make sure that you're not blocking any um, routes of egress and definitely want to make sure that you're watering the tree every day. When you're stringing the lights on the tree, make sure that you're checking those that they are UL listed and that they're specific for the use of the tree. If it's an indoor tree, you want to make sure that you have indoor lights, outdoor tree, outdoor lights. And you also want to make sure that you turn the lights off at the end of the evening before you go to bed or if you're going to be leaving the home, you want to turn those lights off. Also want to talk about home heating. Of course, the temperatures are dropping now and we're using a lot of heating sources. Space heaters are very big. Um, you want to make sure that your heaters, again, are three feet away from anything that can burn. That's including um, people, pets, um, making sure that you're keeping those at a safe distance. Again, you want to keep them out of the way of foot traffic. You don't want to block any exits with your heaters. You want to place those on a solid surface. When you're choosing the heater, um, look for one that has a thermostat and an overheat protection as well as an automatic shutoff feature in case the heater is tipped over. Always want to plug those directly into a wall socket. Don't want to plug those into an extension cord. Turn them off when you leave the room or go to bed. Very careful, make sure you don't put gasoline in a kerosene heater and sometimes people do that. And also don't use an oven. A lot of people will use their oven doors or ovens to heat their room. Use them as a heating source. It's not the um, purpose that it's intended, so it's not a good idea to use that. Fireplaces, stoves, you want to make sure that those are checked by a professional before using them for the season. Um, get those chimneys checked, wood stoves, etc. Again, you want to keep any items that can burn three feet away from the stove or the fireplace. Also on those fireplaces, you want to make sure that you have a really good fireplace screen, whether it's metal or something that has a heat tempered glass, and be sure that it's positioned securely in front of the fireplace. Wood stoves, you want to make sure that you're burning the proper type of wood. It should be seasoned dry wood. If you're using a pellet stove, you want to use dry seasoned wood pellets. Always allow the ashes to cool before disposing. You want to put those in a covered metal container and store them at least 10 feet away from your home, storage buildings, anything like that. And you also want to make sure that you have carbon monoxide alarms installed in your homes to alert you of any problems. Also want to talk about um, power outages. Um, we're expecting winter mix this weekend and I'm sure throughout the winter season there may be chances that your power would go off. Best thing to do is to prepare early. Make sure that you have flashlights. Make sure you know where those are, that you have fresh batteries. Remember that your smartphones has a light as well that you can use as a flashlight. And if you have to use candles, make sure that you use battery powered candles instead of wax candles just to prevent any other type of um, fire hazard. 
want to make sure that if the power goes off in the process of you using something like a hair dryer, curling iron, you want to make sure that you still turn those off. If your power stays out a long period of time and you leave the home, you may not think about it. Power comes back on when you're not there. You don't want the hair dryer or the curling iron to still be on when you get back when the power is restored. So make sure that you do turn those things off and small appliances as well. Stay away from any down power lines if you run across those. Report them to authorities. Um, and also just keep yourself aware of winter reports. Check that on your radio, updates on your smartphones. Another important thing to remember is to make sure that your addresses are visible from the street in case firefighters do need to come there. I know with a lot of the decorating, sometimes you may not be aware that you're covering up your um, house numbers, but you want to always make sure that those house numbers are visible from the street. And also just check on your neighbors in the event of power outages just to see if you've got a senior citizens or just anyone in your, your neighborhood, you want to check on them as well. Also, generators may be used if the power does go out in your home. You want to make sure that you're using those in a well-ventilated location outside of the home, away from any windows or vent openings. Never want to put the generator in your garage, even if you have the garage door open. You want to position them so that the exhaust fumes cannot enter the home through the window or any other openings in your home. If plugging those into appliances, you want to make sure that they're plugged directly into the generator and also have a heavy, heavy duty, excuse me, outdoor rated extension cord on those. Again, you want to always make sure that you have carbon monoxide alarms in the home to alert you of anything that's going wrong and make sure that you're following the manufacturer's directions for placing those carbon monoxide alarms. Turn the generators off, let them cool down before refueling. You never want to refuel that generator while it's hot. And you also want to store the fuel for the generator in a container, in a container for the purpose um, that it's labeled for. And definitely want to store those outside of any living areas. And that's all we have for today. Does anyone have any questions for the fire department? Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for being here this morning. I'm Chief Roundtree for the Police Department. Uh, before I get started, I do want to thank all the, take this opportunity to thank all the women and men of the Police Department for what you do every day to, uh, make, to ensure that we have a, a safe city here in Western Salem. Our first item is our officers' uh, remembrance. As customary, we do want to honor all the WSP off WSPD officers who have lost their lives while serving in the line of duty during the month of December. This month we honor Patrolman John M. Sampson and Sergeant Leland G. Teague. Sergeant jo Patrolman John Sampson in the watch, December the 8th, 1940. Cause of death was a vehicle pursuit. Incident description, Patrolman Sampson succumbed to injuries received three days earlier when his motorcycle struck a bread truck at 16th Street and Patterson Avenue while he was pursuing a speeding vehicle. Sergeant Leland Teague, end of watch was Monday, December the 26th, 1927. Cause of death was gunfire. The date of the incident was December the 12th. 1927. Weapon used was an unknown type handgun. Incident description, Sergeant T succumbed to gunshot wounds he received two weeks earlier when he and several officers raided a home at Oak Street while searching for a suspect wanted in murdering a security guard. The suspect was later apprehended and he was convicted of two counts of first degree murder. Let us all pause for a moment, a moment of silence as we remember Patrolman John Sampson and Sergeant Leland T, and all other officers who have lost their w lives while serving in the month of December. And I know we're closing in on the end of the year, uh, just as a reminder of what we do and the sacrifices of law enforcement all across the country. As of today's date, there have been 137 police officers uh, killed in the line of duty, 
That's up about 15% from the same time last year. 62 are gun related, which is up 72%. And 55 have been, uh, have died as a result of auto related incidents. And that's up 20%. So let's all pause for a moment. Thank you. Our topics for today uh, will include uh, winter driving tips. Uh, they will be provided by Officer C.J. Carter. He'll also touch on the Booze It and Lose It campaign. He'll be followed by Investigator Stephen Horsley, who will provide some information on holiday safety. That will include holiday shopping and also holiday parties. He'll be followed by Detective uh, Walker, who will provide some information on frauds and counterfeits. And we'll conclude with uh, our holiday initiatives uh, that will be provided by Sergeant Mark Snow. Good morning. Uh, name's Officer uh, James Carter with uh, Winston Salem Police Department's Traffic Enforcement Division. So we're going to go over some uh, safe winter driving on some things to keep in mind as uh, inclement weather moves in. Um, thing to remember is to be well rested. Don't drive uh, if you're fatigued. Uh, there's been a lot of studies show that fatigue driving is similar to uh, drunk driving. Um, obey all traffic laws. Uh, ensure that your vehicle is safe to operate uh, any time of the day, especially with inclement weather uh, and with road conditions worsening uh, with inclement weather. Uh, don't drive your, don't outdrive your abilities. Uh, know what you you're comfortable with, and don't stray from those because that can uh, affect your safety. Uh, defensive driving is more important than aggressive driving. Watch out for other people on the roadway, and don't become aggressive because that can affect uh, your driving abilities. Um, important is to make sure that your vehicle is ready to uh, operate uh, any time of day, especially during the winter. Um, check, check your levels, your fluid levels, make sure that your tires are sufficient, make sure your brakes are working properly, um, and that your vehicle's uh, heating equipment's working. Uh, check your tire pressure, you need to check that when it's cold, not after you've been driving. Uh, check the manufacturer's recommended PSI for that. Um, use a tire gauge to check that pressure. Uh, refill to the recommended uh, PSI and then check that every month just to ensure that you don't have any leaks uh, and that your tires are holding that sufficiently. Uh, and just to point out some locations you can locate your recommended PSI on your vehicle uh, is inside your driver's door, either on the door or in the door jam itself where the door closes. Uh, there should be different recommendations for front and rear in case those are different for your vehicle type. Some issues with uh, under or over inflated tires could uh, affect your tread wear. Over inflated uh, will tend to wear the, the middle part of your tire, which will affect your uh, traction and your ability to, for water to be um, moved as you drive. Uh, under inflated is going to wear out your outer, the outside of your tires, also affecting your traction. So it's important to make sure they're properly inflated so that your, your tire tread is making good contact with the road surface. Uh, the use of snow chains is important. Um, it's, it's a good option um, if you feel comfortable with that. Just remember that uh, chains assist with driving. It's not a guaranteed to work. They'll assist with traction. Um, also, um, make sure that you can see. You're going to want to make sure your wipers are um, in good condition, that they're going to function properly. Make sure you've got the icer that'll help clear uh, the ice or snow that's on your windshield. Allow yourself ample time to uh, travel. Um, ensure that your windshield is properly de-iced, de uh, free from snow or any other ice to ensure that you've got a clear side of vision. Also check your exterior mirrors to ensure that they're clear because if you can't see behind you, uh, it, it also affects your visibility. Um, don't cut corners. Uh, ensure that you, you can see when you drive because if you're not if you can't see out of your mirrors, you're, you're driving blind, in essence. You want to check your fluids of your vehicles, make sure your, your oil is at the recommended level, along with your brake fluid and transmission fluid. Again, check your uh, washer fluid or de-icer 
it'll help uh, when you're driving if snow is accumulating it'll help keep that clear of your windshield and keep it from sticking uh, check your battery make sure that your battery um, is functioning properly that'll help start in cold on cold starts colder mornings it's harder on your battery to start and also that goes into planning your trip plan a safe route um, a lot of issues that we see out here is people that don't think ahead when when it starts to snow uh, they don't think about their route um, the fact that they could be going downhill or having to go uphill or the fact that curves will have grades which affect their ability to navigate that area uh, give your time give yourself added commute time because you know it's, it's going to take longer other people are driving slower the possibility for accidents along the way and you, you don't want to push your speed uh, when it comes to snow or ice because everybody knows that your traction is limited uh, like I said plan your routes with minimum grade uh, if you can't think of a route that it's mostly flat if it's going to add 10 minutes to your commute it's better to be able to arrive safely at home or to work um, let, let a family member know your intended route in the event that they don't hear from you they, they kind of know where to start looking um, let police know that hey they hadn't arrived this is the route that they said they were going to take I also have a backup route for any closed routes either closed due to the weather or accidents that's happened uh, always remember we always see the signs but sometimes we don't really think about it bridge ice before roads due to the fact that you've got airflow underneath that uh, watch out for black ice obviously for its name you're not going to be able to see it very well uh, and make sure that you always remember that ice will tend to patch up under shade in shady areas under trees or something along the road most of your accidents occur with minimum snow usually when when it starts to accumulate drivers are caught off guard because they're not thinking uh, they don't realize how quickly the road surface becomes slippery with compromised traction so you need to keep that in mind even even though it's just started remember that it could be slicker than you really think watch your speed it's it's a big it's a big issue make just give yourself plenty of time don't get too fast because it's going to take even longer with the with snow or ice to slow your vehicle uh, slow and steady wins the race I mean it's not a race you want to get there safely uh, slowly accelerate or decelerate if when stopping and starting um, increase if you quickly get on the gas or brakes it's going to break the traction that you do have uh, small steering inputs like if even with steering if you do a drastic steering input it's going to break that traction and increase your following distance because it's going to take you longer to stop if you start to slide don't panic stay calm because that's going to help you control your driving inputs you want minimum inputs so you don't break the traction that you do have um, if you do start to slide uh, don't hit the brakes because that's what most people are going to want to do they're going to want to stop their vehicle but that stops your traction and you're not going to get anywhere with that take your foot off the accelerator you don't need any of that um, and steer into the side it's called counter steering so steer the way the rear end of the vehicle is going and it'll help straighten it out <coughs> like I previously said rapid acceleration isn't good it's no traction but therefore no movement um, rapid acceleration and spinning tires could also result in losing control of your vehicle completely uh, maintain a slow steady speed um, increase your following distance like previously stated uh, a lot of people think that full drive can it's like an end-all be-all when it comes to winter driving remember it's only a tool uh, it can also fail uh, don't uh, don't overestimate it uh, four-wheel drive vehicles can lose tra traction as easily as two-wheel drive vehicles always maintain a safe and steady speed um, in addition to preparing your vehicle you want to prepare yourself in the event of emergency keep emergency equipment in your vehicle prepare for the possibility of being stranded uh, keep basic tools that you can do minimal maintenance to your vehicle uh, some suggested things uh, to keep in your vehicle is uh, flashlights first aid kits um, ice scrapers blankets food water booster cables um, extra clothing uh, flares I know everybody usually have a cell phone but a cell phone or a charger uh, or sand or kitty litter to help with traction um, and snow sho shovel if you need to dig yourself out it's just some good items to keep in your vehicle with winter um, and really all the time it's just an idea of what that could look like if you're stranded in your vehicle conserve your fuel um, limit the amount of time your vehicle is running only run the vehicle enough to knock off the the edge of the, knock off the chill uh, refrain from uh, leaving your vehicle if possible it's going to make it easier for rescuers to locate you and your vehicle 
Uh, you could use flares, uh, triangles, bright material, or anything else to increase your visibility for rescuers. Uh, winter drive, if, if you don't have to drive, stay at home. That's always a safe bet. Um, ensure that your vehicle is safe and prepared for winter driving. Remember, slow and steady wins a race. We don't, we're not trying to win anything out here. Uh, plan accordingly. Allow your, yourself more time for a commute um, and be prepared in the event of an emergency. Uh, in conjunction with the Governor's Highway Safety Program, uh, the Winston Police Department will participate in 2016 uh, Holiday Booze It or Lose It campaign, which starts on January, which started on Janu December 9th, I'm sorry, uh, and runs through January 1st. Uh, the Booze It or Lose It campaign zeroes in on drunken drivers with the innovative education and extensive enforcement of DWI laws. Sobriety checkpoints are continually set up, all set up in North Carolina counties as part of the state's highly effective anti-drunk driving campaign. Uh, law enforcement officers will use six uh, mobile breath alcohol testing units, which is better known as Batmobiles, and house all the equipment that's needed to process uh, driving while impaired uh, charges. It has the equipment, the intoxilator, other instruments, computers, office workstations, and as well as an area for masterets. During the upcoming holiday season, impaired drivers will pose a higher risk to the citizens of our community. It's important that we continuously monitor our roadways to ensure that monitoring the motoring public has the opportunity to arrive safely at their desired location. It's going to take help from the public uh, in doing that. Uh, make sure to keep your family at home if they've had a little bit too much to drink. And as always, wear your seatbelt while driving. Does anybody have any questions? Up next is investigator Stephen Horsley, and he'll be talking about holiday safety. Good morning. Uh, I am investigator Stephen Horsley, uh, Field Services Bureau. I'm just going to talk to you briefly about a little uh, holiday safety and some issues that um, can help uh, have a safer holiday. Uh, first and foremost, as I've said multiple times, please lock your doors. Um, keeping your vehicle locked. Um, and don't leave your keys in the uh, vehicle itself, such as hiding it in a cup holder, glove box, over the visor, anything like that. Uh, don't leave your vehicle running uh, while it's unattended. Running into the store for just a couple seconds or running back into the house um, uh, can cause issues. Don't leave valuables visible. Uh, leaving your computer and everything else laying in the front seat while it's locked uh, still can uh, pose a little bit of uh, temptation. Uh, always try to park in well-lit areas. Um, don't stop for strangers. As you approach your vehicle, have your keys out and ready. Kind of scan the interior before open, see if there's anything um, inside or anyone inside. Uh, once you open the door, don't hesitate. Enter the vehicle and get in and lock it. If you're going out of town um, or away uh, for like you going shopping or going to a party or anything, don't post on social media until you get back home. Don't advertise that you're going to be away from your house for extended periods of town, uh, time. If you're traveling, um, have a neighbor or a family member collect your mail, your newspapers, any package or anything that would indicate that you've not been to your house in some time. Uh, leave emergency contacts uh, with your neighbor, with a family member, uh, so that uh, you can be reached. Don't hide a key outside. Uh, we all have seen the rocks and everything that you can bury and everything like that. Uh, it seems like a pretty good idea, but it's becoming common knowledge now that people do this. Uh, conceal your holiday gifts. I know everybody likes to display their Christmas tree in the window and everything with your gifts out and everything, but that, that too can draw temptation of uh, people walking by. Uh, don't advertise what you got for Christmas either uh, for the um, after Christmas uh, rush of putting all your big boxes and everything out on the curb. Break them down, put them in bags, uh, send them to recycle the way they're supposed to be. Keep your curtains uh, and your blinds closed. Uh, use of timers on your lights if you're going to be away for an extended period of time. Uh, having the outside lights come on for a little bit just to make it look like somebody's inside. Uh, keep copies of uh, your receipts and your serial numbers. That's very helpful if just in case something unfortunate does happen, then uh, we can attempt to retrieve it quicker. There is a site that's free to the general public that, is, that can assist us. It's called reportit.leadsonline.com. It's free to set up an account and it leaves everything on a uh, internet base that allows the user to store securely all their property and everything with their receipts 
and then they're the only ones that can access it until the time they need, they can turn it over to law enforcement. But it's also web-based and in the cloud, so there's no storing of uh, hard drives or anything like that that could potentially be uh, messed up. If you're throwing the holiday party, know your guests and know who's in your home. It's always nice to have new friends and everything, but just know who's coming in your home. Uh, make sure the party doesn't get out of hand where you've got a bunch of people that don't know. Uh, secure your valuables. We all want to trust everybody, but it's a good idea to secure your valuables. Um, use a designated driver. Everybody gets a little bit too much cheer sometimes. Uh, make sure your guests and you are safe. Use a designated driver. Uh, watch your vehicles, watch your guest vehicles, and uh, watch where they park. Again, this goes back to having them park in a well-lit area. Every so often, just kind of peek out to make sure that, you know, there's not a lot of vehicles out there and somebody else is poking around that we're not supposed to. And again, avoid posting on social media until it's all said and done. Uh, if you're going to be gone or you're having this extravagant thing, social media is great, but it's also a tool that can be used in other ways. When you're out shopping, try to take a friend or somebody with you. Um, if you have to go out alone, just be aware of your surroundings. Uh, keep your kids close. Um, you know, kind of keep an eye on them. If they're going to run, run within eyesight. Uh, don't leave your personal belongings, uh, particularly purses or other things, uh, in your cart. Because even just leaving your purse, turning for just a second to read the side of a box without paying attention, your purse or uh, personal belongings can be uh, lifted out. Be aware of your surroundings. Uh, avoid distractions that might take you, again, away from your belongings in your buggy that uh, uh, allow someone else to uh, take your stuff. Uh, another big one is staring at your cell phone while you're walking. Uh, we all do it. Um, in these instances, it's, it is a distraction, but the big thing is with crowded, par with crowded parking lots and things that are going on, uh, if you're staring at your cell phone, you have a very good potential of getting hit um, and there be accidents and other things. So try to minimize um, your use of your cell phone while you're walking to and from your car. Avoid uh, carrying excessive packages or large amounts of cash. Um, the packages, again, are a distraction, just like the phone and anything else. We want to be aware of, of what's going on. Um, the large amount of cash, you start displaying a large amount of cash, somebody's paying attention, it, it then could make you a target. Remain diligent uh, with your purse or your wallet. Gentlemen, kind of keep your uh, wallets up front in the front pocket or in your inner coat, away from your typical back pocket where we all keep it. And ladies, if you're carrying your purse, secure it under your arm and keep your arm tight around it. Um, know where you are and remember where you park. If you're parked in EE, write it down. There are things on all the phones now that will help you do this. Write it on a piece of paper. And also, don't worry about a parking space. Don't get into a physical altercation or a disagreement over you've been waiting and somebody cuts you off. There are plenty of other places you can park and you don't want to ruin your holidays and everybody else's by um, having an incident. Are there any questions? Can you speak to them briefly about the reason why you say don't put that big screen TV box out on the curb? Yes, sir, because if you do that, it is an invitation for an after, um, basically a, a holiday celebration for a thief. He knows now that you have a big screen TV in your house. He knows that you received all those electronics and all the, the hot toys if you leave them up and they're visible like that. It's an invitation to come and... Uh, you know, scan your house when you're not there and uh, come in and take your items. Are there any other questions? All right, if there are no further questions, I'm going to call Detective Walker up here and he's going to talk to you about uh, holiday fraud and scams. Good morning. I'm Investigator K.A. Walker from Winston-Salem Police Department's Criminal Investigations Division and I'm currently assigned to the Financial Crimes Unit. My intention today is to educate the public and shoppers about fraud and various methods where shoppers may be victimized this holiday season. One such way is by the use of ATM skimmers. A lot of times criminals will attach an ATM skimmer to an ATM device. It goes over the card reader slot and it's usually nondescript. You won't readily be able to recognize it unless you know what you're looking for. It's Intention is to capture credit card or debit card data 
store it on the device so that a criminal can later retrieve the device and then use that credit card or debit card number for their own purposes. One way to look for these is to simply pull on an ATM card slot. If it comes off, it doesn't belong. Normally used in conjunction with ATM skimmers are pin capturing devices. These are small cameras that are usually placed above a pin pad, to the side of a pin pad, or really anywhere on an ATM where the pin pad will be visible. Their intention is to capture numbers that are punched into a pin pad, and they're usually used in conjunction with the debit or credit card numbers that have been stolen with the ATM skimmers, so thieves and criminals can use those at their will. The easiest way to defeat the pinhole camera is to simply cover the pin pad when you're entering your pin number. If you're like me, you like to do a lot of online shopping during the holiday season. I would advise that whenever you are doing online shopping, or really if you're visiting any website on the internet, you look for two items at the website that you're visiting. A lock symbol, as well as the HTTPS letters that I've highlighted in red. This indicates that this website is set up to be secure, and there is a lower likelihood that fraudulent activity will be at will be occurring on this website. However, it is also advisable that if you are doing online shopping, do it through an online merchant. If you meet someone online, a lot of times criminals will set themselves up to appear as a legitimate individual that's looking to buy or sell an item when they really have no intention of doing so. Their intention is to victimize someone either by giving them a fraudulent item or counterfeit currency or something along those lines. Merchants are and can be evaluated by the Better Business Bureau while thieves cannot. So this is why we say if you're going to do business online, do it through a, re a reputable merchant and not just an individual. And lastly, I would like to mention the Know Your Money PDF. I myself use this PDF numerous times whenever I conduct counterfeit currency investigations. This PDF is available through the Secret Service's website, secretservice.gov. It's free. You can download it to your computer. You can pull it up in your web browser and look at it at any time. Any merchant or any individual who is planning on doing a lot of cash business this holiday season, I would recommend you visit the website, find this PDF, and keep it with you. Not only does it highlight what legitimate currency is supposed to look like, as is shown in this slide, it also shows you all of the security features that are present on our currency, as well as a, a description on the left and then zoomed in pictures on the right of what the security features are supposed to look like. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. I'll give it to Sergeant Snow. Good morning. I'm Sergeant Snow with the uh, Community Resources Unit here at the Police Department. One of the main focus areas of the Community Resources Unit is to be a liaison between the Police Department and the community that we serve. Um, throughout the year, we're always looking for ways to um, interact with the community in a positive manner. <coughs> During the holiday season this year, we partner with other local agencies to uh, carry out some important missions. At Thanksgiving this year, um, we were able to donate several turkeys to several local families just to make ensure that they had a Thanksgiving Day meal. From December the 5th through the 9th of this year, the Community Resources Unit partner uh, participated in the Stuff the Patrol Car event. It was, uh, we were stationed at the Walmart on Haines Mill Road where we accepted donations from toys from the, from the public. <clears throat> this year was a truly a blessing. Many local residents turned out to help Stuff the Patrol Car over and over again. Community Resource Unit has partnered with other local agencies <clears throat> and city officials to identify families that are in need this Christmas season. Community Resources Unit will help distribute the toys to these families and other agencies here in the near future. <clears throat> this coming Friday, December the 16th, the Winston-Salem Police Departments and Fire Departments will partner with Target to host our annual Heroes and Helpers event. <clears throat> this event will take place at 7, 7 a.m. at the Target on, on a university parkway. Um, Twenty children from Project Hope have been identified by the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School System. These children will, will arrive at Target where they will be served a breakfast with the police and the fire departments. And after breakfast, each child will be given a Target gift card 
be partnered with either a fireman or a police officer and they'll be allowed to shop for Christmas gifts. <clears throat> uh, the community resource unit has also helped um, collecting blankets for the local homeless community. Um, several blankets have already been donated, but the need is still there. Um, if anybody that wishes to donate a blanket, um, there is a uh, place here at the local at the police department in the lobby during no normal business hours to drop them off. Are there any questions? I'd like to introduce Mr. Mel Sadler with emergency management. Thank you, Sergeant Snow. I'm Mel Sadler, uh, Director of Emergency Management for the City of Winston-Salem and for Scythe County. Our office this month wants to talk about one subject briefly, uh, and that is the months of January and February are really, really important months for manufacturers and industrial sites uh, that use, manufacture, or store hazardous materials. During the months of January and February, uh, your inventory or their inventories must be reported uh, for the preceding year for a number of reasons and because of local and federal legislation. One of the important things we want everybody to keep in mind is that one of the reasons that they report the inventory is so that the emergency responders can know what's, or have an idea at least, or what they can anticipate uh, running into when they go into your facility at 3 o'clock in the morning and there's nobody there. So uh, we're going to ask Robert Reese, one of our emergency management uh, uh, coordinators, to come forward and to address the subject. Good morning, everyone. As introduced, I'm Robert Reese. Uh, I'm a coordinator with uh, Winston Salem for South County Emergency Management and also the Operations Officer. I'm going to be discussing with you uh, the Tier 2 reporting uh, that takes place starting in January 1st. Uh, my contact information is up there for those that may have questions regarding this process or anything about hazardous materials in our county. Uh, I can be reached at rreece at cdofwsfire.org or at the office 336. 6616440. The information you will see, uh, it was uh, provided and confirmed by Cole Owen uh, with uh, North Carolina Emergency Management. Okay, let's talk about the Tier 2 reporting basis. Uh, it's required under the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act, uh, also referred to often as the EPCRA. This annual report of facility chemical inventory is due every year uh, starting January 1st, and they have until March 1st to get that completed. And as uh, Director Sadler said, that is the chemicals they had in storage from 2015 or the year before. Uh, E-Plan is what North Carolina uses in order to collect the Tier 2 reports. Uh, it allows each county to access the Tier 2 data. And the biggest asset, as he mentioned, is it allows us to authorize first responders to view the data that is submitted. And here's the, uh, the fee structure. Uh, as defined by 29 CFR, it is uh, $50 per hazardous substance. It is $90 per extremely hazardous substance. And last year there was a change uh, that I reported. Uh, the total fees are now capped at $5,000 per reporting site. Uh, prior to last year, it was per entity, uh, but that has remained the same again this year. And they will also accept Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and electronic check as forms of payment. And one key note is Forsyth County does not charge additional filing fees. All these fees are set by the state. Now, there are some, uh, some agencies that are exempt from the fees. Uh, family farm enterprises, state and local government facilities, federal facilities under immunity, uh, nonprofit corporations, commercial fuel stations, and this is just for the actual fuel itself, and motor vehicle dealerships. And the key to take away from this is even though you're exempt, you are still required to file. And there are additional resources out there sh uh, should someone need to uh, seek the state level uh, that, that will actually have tutorial videos as far as e-plan uh, about who needs to pay the fees and how the fees are calculated. Uh, there's a very long uh, web address there that can be uh, accessed at the North Carolina Department of Public Safety. And also uh, Co Owen, he is the EPCRA coordinator. Uh, his office number is 919-825-2277. Are there any questions regarding Tier 2 reporting? All right. Thank you so much, and thank you for uh, attending the 
December 2016 Public Safety Media Briefing.